Ten cent beer night at a baseball game sounds like a great idea. At least, that's what the Cleveland Indians thought one humid summer night in 1974. In fairness, at first glance, ten cent beer night sounds like the perfect plan to sell tickets to a ball game, but when beers are ten cents, one dime, all night, let's just say things went off the rails pretty quickly. Here's the story of the infamous ten cent beer night. Before we get into the events of that fateful evening, it's important to understand the build-up to the moment. Sure, 10 cent, 12 ounce beers all night is already a recipe for disaster, but if you look at the history of the players, the teams, the managers, the city involved, it just makes it worse. First, the two teams. 10 cent beer night was to be held in Cleveland while the Indians were hosting the Texas Rangers. Earlier in the season, while the Indians were on the road in Texas playing the Rangers, the teams got into a brawl, like a legit fight. Not one of those brawls where everyone just sort of dances around and yells at each other. There was an incident where one of the Indians slid into second base too hard in the eyes of the Rangers, so then there were some fastballs being thrown at people's heads, which led to legit punches being thrown, a brawl, and Rangers fans throwing food and beers at Indian players. So, there is plenty of bad blood between the two teams heading into their series in Cleveland, and Cleveland Indians fans are now all fired up for their newfound rivals to come to town. Now, let's talk about the city of Cleveland and its people in 1974. Being fired up for a baseball team you don't like to come to town is, again, already a recipe for some sort of incident. But Cleveland was already a city on the brink. In the decades leading up to that fateful summer evening in 1974, Cleveland saw around 600 factories shut down. With that came the loss of thousands upon thousands of jobs, surging rates of poverty, drug addiction, and crime out of desperation. Cleveland was burning. Literally the river was on fire. Cleveland was so riddled with pollution and waste from the factories which abandoned them that the Cuyahoga River which runs through the city caught fire. More than once, sending flames five stories high. The river was on fire. The city was a stick of dynamite and the fuse was 10 cent beer night. If you're imagining that there couldn't possibly be a good outcome to this whole 10 cent beers all night thing, you're absolutely right. So here we go. The promotion worked. The Indians, who were terrible at the time, were only averaging a few thousand fans per game. 25,000 plus fans showed up for 10 cent beer night. The echoes of Chief Wahoo's famous war drums filling the air, accompanied by the flashes and howls of firecrackers, which the fans brought themselves, because it was 1974, and it was 10 cent beer night. By the second inning, after the Rangers took the lead with the dinger, a fat, middle-aged woman jumped onto the field, ran to the Indians on deck circle, and flashed her breast to the crowd, and then tried to kiss the head umpire. As you can guess, she was hammered. This was the second inning. In the fourth inning, after the Rangers hit another dinger, a man, fully nude, ran onto the field and slid into second base. Then that guy ran off. They didn't catch him. Maybe they didn't want to. Cleveland was just warming up. At this point in the evening, the people pouring the beer for the fans weren't able to keep up with the demand at the concession stands. The one rule at the stadium was you could only purchase six cups of beer at a time. Not six beers total all night. It was six beers per person at one time. So people were just buying six beers for 60 cents, drinking them, getting back in line and doing it all over again. As you might imagine, it was a madhouse. So to try to keep up with the consumption, they just brought in the beer trucks set up the trucks outside of the outfield fence, and just had people line up right at the beer trucks to get their 10 cent beer. And who was handing out the beers at the beer trucks? Well, it was two teenage girls in skimpy tops because it was the 70s and here we are. You've got two scantily clad teenage, teenage girls handing out beers at 10 cents a pop to drunken laid off factory workers on a hot, humid summer night with war drums and fireworks going off in the background. What could possibly go wrong? Well, of course these poor girls can't keep up with this setup either, and they just walked off. And why wouldn't they? The guys in line grabbed the table that had been set up to collect the cash for the beers, and they just hucked it over the trucks. Now, 10 cent beer night basically turned into free beer night. There were guys not even bothering to fill up cups, they were just hauling off the tap on the beer truck. In the fifth inning, two men jumped over the outfield wall and mooned the Rangers outfielders. This brought about another stoppage in play as security chased these guys all over the diamond, the players looking on helplessly. Shortly after this, Rangers manager Billy Martin headed to the mound for a conference with his pitcher. Upset that he was delaying the game, the Indians fans threw full cups of beer onto the field, because who cares, they cost 10 cents or were free. Upon returning to the dugout, 
Billy Martin blew kisses at the fans, resulting in Indians fans shooting fireworks into the Rangers' bullpen, which was then ordered to be evacuated by the umpires. This is real. This happened at a Major League Baseball game. After this, the public address announcer proclaimed, please don't throw things onto the field. This resulted in, you guessed it, a tsunami of litter raining down on the field. From that point on, they decided to abandon making announcements over the PA system. Basically, the inmates were running the asylum. The Indians didn't think to have any extra police presence at the stadium that night. There were 50 security guards, 50, for 25,000 fans. The Rangers' first baseman estimated he had 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at him, and he was also nearly hit by a gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. It was at that moment that things went from just pure insanity to dangerous. At this point, there are so many streakers on the field, the security just stopped trying to catch them. All this while the Indians and Rangers were trying to play a baseball game, which is hard when the outfield is full of naked people and they're tearing the padding off the left field wall. And a few fans stole the bases. They took the bases off the field. They just took them. In the eighth, cherry bombs started raining down in the Rangers' dugout. In the ninth, the Indians staged a remarkable comeback and tied the game at five. That's when a drunk guy ran onto the outfield and tried to grab one of the Rangers outfielders' hats. This was the last straw. From the dugout, all the Rangers could see was a fan attacking their outfielder. So Billy Martin looked to his team, grabbed a bat, and charged onto the field like it was a war zone. And you know what? It kinda was. This resulted in a sea of fans coming out of the stands to fight the Texas Rangers, which resulted in the Indians running onto the field with their bats to fend off their own fans and fight with the Rangers. This is all so insane, it's almost starting to sound normal. Let me just remind you, this was a Major League Baseball game. A street fight between the players, the professional big league players, and the fans happened in the outfield. People were getting hit with bats, the chief umpire got hit in the head with a chair, people were bleeding, people were injured badly, the SWAT team had to come in with tear gas and clear it all up. All while, and this is maybe the best part, the stadium organist was playing take me out to the ball game. In the end, the game was forfeited to Texas. 60,000 beers were consumed at 10 cents a pop. There were 19 streakers, seven emergency room worthy injuries, and nine arrests. To this day, those stolen bases the fans just took have never been returned. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.